Hi, Dan. Hello. You right? <laughs> yes, thanks. How are you doing today? Good. I am Good. fine. It is roasting hot and it's beautiful. It is so nice. Um, so today we're going to hear a bit about your testimony. Um, we are. I've got some questions to quiz you with. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one, what was your, what is your earliest memory of church? Oh, wow. Um, so yeah, earliest memory of church would be growing up in church. Um, mm. I didn't grow up in St. John's. I went to a different church when I was growing up. Um, so earliest, me actually my earliest memory of church particularly was when I trapped my hand in a door and, um, oh. yeah, so not a happy memory, but, no. um, <laughs> So that's my first memory and that's what you asked but um no i grew up in a church in bromley um and my family went there so i've got two older brothers my mum and dad went there and we were kind of super involved my dad did stuff like preaching and um yeah we're just generally really involved in the church and i was at that church until um i got married back in 2009 and that's when i moved to st john's um Amazing. So I've basically been only ever at two churches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Um, when do you think it was the first point that you decided actually, yep, yeah, I'm going to follow Jesus personally in my life? That again, a, a great question. Um, I think it ties into what was happening in my life when I grew up. So when, like I said, I grew up in a church, so I knew lots of Bible stories, knew lots about Jesus. Mm -hmm. um and would have considered myself a follower of jesus when i was growing up and then when i was 12 um to me like completely unexpectedly um my dad left so he was really involved in church and he was mm -hmm. really involved in um well yeah like the whole of life and yeah, yeah. when he left that was like a huge change um because everything that i thought was like really certain so you think you think like your family situation is certain like mm. your parents are always going to be there and you think that church and things like that is just like totally normal um yeah it just all of a sudden like came crashing down like mm. uh, no no one saw it coming basically mm. um and that that really made me question like everything so you just kind of i because i'd grown up in church you just kind of accepted that's it. And I hadn't really made a decision for myself, although I believed it. I'd never questioned it or pushed against it or anything like that. Mm. Um, so then that led to teenage years, which um, were interesting, <laughs> ups and downs, um, at times following Jesus, at other times not. So I never had one of those clear cut moments of like, on the 23rd of whatever, I decided to follow Jesus. And then my life changed. It was like, no, I just had a, a mixed bag of like, doing stuff with church not doing stuff with church um and was that like to get like so you would turn up on a sunday and then the rest of the week you'd kind of be living yeah, absolutely there. absolutely yeah mm -hmm. um so i'd i'd be there on sundays and i'd help out i'd do things like sound which is where i've kind of learned to do sound engineering type stuff or help mm -hmm. out doing various bits and pieces um but then like god had one hour on a sunday and I had the other 167 hours of a week basically mm. to do whatever I wanted and I did do whatever I wanted. I, I didn't follow, uh, I mean, had great friends, but we egged each other on and did stupid stuff all the time. Mm. Um, and looking back on it, you kind of, yeah, you realize that like the faithfulness of God to keep drawing you back, even though you keep mucking up. Um, because there'd be moments where I'd feel really close to God, say at a mm -hmm. summer camp or at a, I don't know, like a youth event or something like that. I could feel really quite close to God and think, mm -hmm. okay, I, I do get it. I, God, I know you're real, but then I'd still just go off and do my own thing anyway because it was easier. It was seemed more fun. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, so that that was like my teenage years. So I never had like a clear cut like now i follow jesus and before i didn't it's because i've always known jesus mm. and I've, it's more of a like a complicated like relationship like in my head i knew he was real mm. in my heart i would i wouldn't basically give him every bit of my life and give him all the control or mm. um yeah like mm. there's a cheesy phrase i hate cheesy christian phrases but um <laughs> 
there's that cheesy phrase if he's not lord of all he's not lord at all <laughs> and like and that was like certainly true of me like he was definitely not lord of my whole life yeah, um, yeah. so then was i really treating him like god at all and mm. the answer would have been no mm. and when did that start to change for you that you started giving surrendering more of your life i guess i i think it's an ongoing process strangely like mm -hmm. i still i still find like god challenges me in bits of my life is like do you do you really trust me with mm. this bit of your life or that bit of your life um or are you just trying to like give bit by bit to god and i think it's the graciousness of god really like he loves mm. us and he if he told me all the things that i need to sort out in my life today it would probably ruin me um, mm and so I think it's just been a gradual process but the heart position of going actually God I do want to give everything to you mm. because I know your plan for my life is the best plan and I know that you although life can be hard and I've experienced hard times in life um actually I know that he's been with me through it all um, mm. Mm. So yeah and um, what have been your biggest marks of um in your faith journey mm. so yeah there's some big big moments um one of them would have been my my dad leaving um mm. so when i was a teenager i'd have a million questions and frustrate my youth leaders and ask them all the hardest <laughs> questions i could think of and yeah and what kind what sort of questions were they uh, oh everything everything from like doesn't science disprove god and mm. doesn't um i don't know how can i trust the bible it was written loads of years ago by old men and uh, there's nothing to yeah. say um yeah a, a load of the the kind of the ones that can still be tricky to solve but mm. yeah like and a load of those bits and then also just like god I'm, I'm not feeling it today i'm off doing my own thing mm. um and yeah I, I kind of since then big moments for me have probably been that well getting married and becoming a father um mm. obviously having four kids can be testing at times but <laughs> you do realize that god calls himself father to us and to, to understand what i feel towards my kids um and have experienced like a father leaving as well mm. it's kind of a it, it un, unraveled like a whole to know different side to god that like the way i feel towards my kids or the way he won't abandon me um mm. all those kind of things come in and yeah that's that's been a big part of my faith in terms of learning that god is a good father and he mm. does love me um and um then the, the, the biggest one recently was i had a really close friend um called carl that many of the people watching would would know about mm. and when so to put it in context we we'd have him around probably at least once a week he'd be in our house with another one of our friends mm. they'd be around for dinners and yeah have front door keys and everything mm. um they, they were really close and he was godfather to the twins and yeah he he got leukemia um when he was when he was 25 at the time mm. and it was a, basically a two-year really <laughs> tough battle with leukemia and at the end of it sadly died um mm. and that whole two-year process was it, it really does change what you think is so clear-cut in mm. Um, in terms of like god is good and he can heal and he wants the best for you and he has plans for your life and and then your your mate who has a promising future and mm. like loves god with all his heart um follower of jesus eventually dies after a really horrendous two years basically you just mm. look at it and go god like what are you doing in this and i, I remember one time um quite vividly having to um I'd, I'd just been around to his house and i got back in my car to to drive home mm. um, and i just remember just bawling my eyes out and shouting at god and having a mm. right go at him 
um, it was ugly and it was um, probably not the best language either. And <laughs> but I got to that point with God knowing that he's a father who loves me and wants to know what's on my heart. And mm. so, yeah, although it was hard, that it, it, I still view that as a, a key moment when actually I kind of like got real with God about actually mm. my frustrations with, I don't know. And I you still can't answer some of these questions, but I know mm. there's a goodness in God that um, for Carl right now, I know that he is completely healed and with God and restored. Mm. And that gives me tremendous hope. Mm. Amazing. Oh, I don't know where to go next now. <laughs> um, what, I love this one. What would be your favourite uh, Bible verse or passage and why? Mm, yeah. Um, you said you were going to ask me this and I said, I don't have one, which is always <laughs> kind of you don't have a favorite bible um and i i just find it too hard to choose one verse because it's like i'll read one verse one day and it kind of sticks out and i'm like wow that's amazing that's the best verse in the bible and then the next day i can read the bible again and find a different verse and think it's the best verse in the bible um and so yeah i mean i love reading the gospels like what jesus did uh, just fundamentally amazing um i really love uh, some of Genesis, some of the really early stuff in the Bible that we kind of, not just because when you start reading the Bible in a year, you think I'm going to start at Genesis and read all yeah. the through and get really good at Genesis 1 through about 10 and then <laughs> oh. it gets a bit sketchy and the, the, the Bible oh, hold on you're down. still there, you yes. are good just you back right you're yeah, back just I'm back. About. I'm back. I'm back so yeah i was saying i was saying um, <laughs> that genesis a bit of the bible that oh no we <laughs> oh we got a love zoom haven't we um the, the bit of the bible that always speaks to me without fail is psalms so um and i think it's partly just that the way the psalmists write they kind of tell god everything they, mm. when they're struggling when they're annoyed at god when they're overjoyed with who he is and yeah it, it always speaks to me and it's always um a favorite bible to turn yeah. to mm. i know that there's been um points that i've asked you questions about the bible and as you talk about it you can just see your like excitement about it like yeah. <laughs> really dry uh, the more you talk about it, the more excited you get about it um, and when do you think that probably first started kind of your interest in learning more and understanding more about the bible i, I definitely say like i didn't always used to be like it i used to kind mm. of dip in and out and like this bit or not understand that bit um mm. but over the last few years really um it's kind of like I, I i don't know why it's one of those things like different people experience god in different ways mm. and that's just the nature of who he is so some people come out walking around in beauty of nature and feel an incredible closeness to god mm. um and like yeah i get sunset and think wow god, you've made the whole sunset it's amazing mm. but for some reason god really speaks to me through his word um mm. And I do believe it is the word of God, not just the words of a few old guys um, mm. who don't have a grip on reality. Like I, I genuinely believe, yeah, yeah, he used people, he used their character and their style and their mm. um, creativity. And with that, he created the Bible. Mm. Um, and it just, I don't know, there's bits of it. I love the weird bits as well. Like <laughs> there's some really odd stuff in there and you think, <laughs> How is this like relevant to my faith right now yeah um but some of it wasn't written to us just for now some mm. of it is and some of it wasn't um it's just un unveiling the story of who god is and how much he loves us um mm. and i guess like yeah but so it can happen like when i'm reading the psalms i'll hit a verse and just like it just strikes me between the eyes and i think god you're speaking to me right now you mm. wrote this thousands of years ago with David or with someone else 
Mm. And it just, yeah, it's phenomenal. Mm. It's big. Uh, last question. Um, if you could give one bit of advice to 13 year old Dan, what would it be? Mm. <laughs> Stop it now. Um, <laughs> it, it would. Um, I, I mean, there'd, there'd be so many things that I'd want to say to a 13 year old me. Mm. Some of them being like, don't do that. Make sure you do this. Like yeah. ob obvious stuff and um, try a bit harder at school or mm. whatever. Um, but the big one is that you can trust God. So mm. the idea of trusting God that he is good and that he does want the best for me and that he can see me through difficult situations. And just that idea of saying, like, real trust that he's faithful mm -hmm. trust that he's um he's in control and like uh, i think that would be the biggest message that i'd say to a 13 year old me 13 year old me probably wouldn't accept it and probably be like <laughs> eh, whatever that old guy doesn't know what he's talking about um, but yeah yeah that's yeah. probably what i'd say that's great well thanks dan and thanks for your honesty and sharing um about your so, faith really appreciate it time Lovely. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.